to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. So we're going to start first with the perpendicular bisector theorem. And I've written the pieces in here, but what I'm going to be showing you while I talk is what that looks like on the diagram. Geometry is so visual that we really want to focus on what's happening in our diagram and what these pieces really mean. All right, so we have the first one. Perpendicular bisector theorem says if line PM is perpendicular to line AB, which is marked in our diagram here with the right angle, and AM is congruent to MB. So I'm looking at these pieces here in red. If I have those pieces given to me, then I can use this theorem to state that line segment PA is congruent to PB. That's what this theorem does for us. So it gives us that piece. Uh, next, if we flip that and do the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, this says that if I already know that line PA is congruent to PB, then I can use the converse of this theorem to state that PM, line PM, must be perpendicular to AB and segment AM has to be congruent to MB. All right, next we have the angle bisector theorem. This one's a little bit more complicated, as you can see. Uh, here we have if the ray QS bisects the angle PQR. So if I mark that on my diagram, that looks like this. Ray QS bisects PQR. So it cuts that angle in half, so we're going to have those two pieces of the angle congruent to each other. And I have SP perpendicular to ray QP, and if I have SR perpendicular to ray QR. So this is a lot of given information that we have to have in order to use this theorem. But if we do have all of those pieces that I've marked on my diagram, then I can use the angle bisector theorem to state then SP would have to be congruent to SR. So those two little segments will be congruent if I have all the information given in the first half of that sentence or that statement. All right, and then if we flip that around, the converse of the angle bisector theorem says if we have SP is perpendicular to ray QP and SR is perpendicular to ray QR, and I know that the segment SP is congruent to the segment SR. So if we're given all that information in our problem, then I can use the converse of the angle bisector theorem to state that the angle Q or PQR must be bisected by the ray QS. So that's what the converse of that angle bisector theorem does for us. All right, so let's look at a couple examples on how to use these theorems. So here it says set up the equations to solve for the variables and state the theorem we used. So let's look at the picture. And when we want to figure out what theorem we're using, we want to look at our theorems and see which, um, which first half of the theorem, which given information, which hypothesis does this picture match. So if we look all the way up at the top, we're given perpendicular lines and we have AM congruent to MB. And that really does look like what we're given here. Here's my perpendicular lines and the two pieces are congruent. So this is going to match the perpendicular bisector theorem. So oops, that's colors a little difficult to see. All right, perpendicular bisector theorem. All right, so we have which theorem we're going to use. Now we need to figure out what we can do with it. So let's look back up at that theorem and we can see that if I have that given information, then I can use this theorem to state that PA, this line here, is congruent to this one. So using this theorem, I can come down here and say, okay, this has to be congruent to this. So to solve for a variable, we can set them equal to each other. We have 5n minus 20 equals 3n. Get our n's together. Negative 20 equals negative 2n. So n is going to be 10. All right, there's our first example. Now let's look at our next example. 
we have a picture that looks like this. That kind of looks like our angle bisector theorems. We need to figure out if it's the converse or the, just the regular angle bisector theorem. So look at the given information. We're given perpendicular lines and we're given that this is congruent to this. Which theorem does that match? Let's look. Does it match the given information for the angle bisector or the converse of the angle bisector theorem? And it looks like we have the same markings as the converse of the angle bisector theorem. So that's the theorem we're going to use, the converse of the angle bisector theorem. All right, and then if we look at that theorem, the converse states that if we have all this given information, which we do, I can use the theorem to state that the angles here must be congruent. So I can set these angles equal to each other. 5x plus 20 equals 9x. Get my x's together. 20 equals 4x, so x equals 5. All right, and there's the rest of that problem. And I think that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.